Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. This is a 2022 Mercedes-Benz Metris that's been, let's just say, inspired by Maybach, which is Mercedes' ultra-luxury brand. This isn't a Maybach van, but it's been modified to look like one, to feel like one, to have all the luxury trappings of a $100,000 ultra-luxury van. Today, I'm going to review this Maybach-inspired Metris and show you all the quirks and features of a luxury van. <laughs> all right, time for the quirks and features of the Maybach-inspired Mercedes van. Starting with a little overview. This van started its life as a Mercedes-Benz Metris, which is a van that I am known to hate. I gave it a terrible review years ago, and I still stand by it today. But this van has been radically transformed by a company called Design VIP. They're a Mercedes-Benz partner, and they take the Metris, a deeply mediocre van, and they turn it into, well, an ultra-luxury, ultra-special, really <laughs> incredibly opulent and cool place to be. And they do it in kind of a factory-looking way. It almost looks as if Maybach actually made a van. Instead of this stupid over-the-top conversion, it's kind of subtle and nice and factory and... Well, let's take a look. We start by getting into the back seat. You open up the sliding door and it's power operated, of course. Nothing particularly unusual about that. But as the door slides open, the first thing you notice is an umbrella. In fact, an umbrella with a Mercedes three-pointed star at its base, which is how you know this van means business. It's not your typical minivan. Next, you climb inside, you see the seating position, the arrangement, the curtains, the materials in here, and that's when you really start to understand that this van is going to have some quirks and features, and some excellent ones. But we'll start here between these two rear seats where you have a screen mounted on this fixed panel. Now, this screen is just an iPad, but loaded onto it is a Design VIP app created specially by the company who makes the vans, for each individual van, and it controls all sorts of different systems and features within the van. For example, let's say you want your espresso maker revealed. Well, just press the espresso maker open button, and as you can see, an espresso maker pops out from a panel in the side of the van, and we are just getting started. Next, let's say you want your refrigerator. Well, of course, this van has one, and to access it, you just press the refrigerator open button in your screen, and then the refrigerator automatically opens up between the two front seats, and that's where you can store your sandwiches, your drinks, whatever you want to keep cool. And by the way, I'm going into the screen and pressing things, and I'm gonna do that throughout this video, but you can basically activate everything in this van by using voice control, too. This icon, you press it, and it pulls up a list of voice commands you can say, and just to give you an example, well, take a look. Left table open. Command success. Left table close. And there is oh so much more to discuss. I already showed you the espresso maker in the fridge, but if you open up this panel here next to the front seats, you have champagne flutes, one for each rear passenger, and a PlayStation 5. <laughs> That's included in the van so that you can play video games while you're being driven around in the back of your luxury van. Over in this compartment next to the back seat, slide it open and there's a safe. And not just some boring combination lock safe, but one that opens with your fingerprint, as you can see here. Put my print down and now I'm into my safe where I can store all of my very important items in my very important van. Over in this panel, 
panel. On the other side, you pop it open and you can see power ports. You have USB-A in here. You have HDMI. My personal favorite, you have a universal power plug. So US power sockets can go in here. But if you're coming in from Europe, you forgot your adapter. Well, your power socket will fit in here too. And that is a fantastic idea. And then there's the curtains. You can see on the side curtains all throughout this van to keep you completely eliminated from the world around you if that's what you want. Not surprisingly, the curtains are power operated. Go into the screen, press a button, and the curtains automatically open themselves. Very nice, very easy, very simple. You even have curtains in the rear window. So it's not just the sides where you can enclose yourself. You can also do it in back. Close them up, and then you're completely cocooned from the outside world. But it gets even more amazing. All of the seats back here are power operated. You can adjust how they sit, their position, all that stuff. The front ones, you can see the power controls here, but check this out. This little part of the control, which usually is like a leg rest, in this van, it opens up a hidden storage compartment underneath the seat. And you have one of those on both sides, a power operated storage compartment that you can open from the comfort of your seat. And here you can see it's holding drink glasses, but I guess in theory, you can have it carry whatever it is that you might want. Now, speaking of those front seats in this rear area, you can see between them you have a television. That TV obviously can't be watched by the people in those seats, but if you're sitting here, you can just recline, relax, and watch your TV or play with your PlayStation while you're being driven along. But in case you want to contact the driver, you can always put the TV down. Go back to the app, push the button, and the TV automatically goes down whirring ever so slowly into the partition, and now you and the driver can, well, speak. But let's say you want to talk to the driver and play the PlayStation 5. Well, you can do that too because there's an intercom. Press the intercom icon in your app, and now you and the driver can communicate, and you don't even have to see him. <laughs> You don't have to put down your TV. You don't even have to pause your PS5 game. Next, look up. You got a starry night headliner in here, just like a Rolls Royce. It looks like a nice field of stars all throughout the top, the ceiling of this van, and you can adjust the colors. They're white, they look classy, they look Mercedes-Benz-ish, but you can go red, green, blue, purple, whatever you want. As you can see on the screen, the colors change, and now your starry night, the mood changes in the van. And by the way, going back to the app and the screen, you can use it to also adjust your media controls, so exactly what you're seeing in any given moment. You can put on the TV, the PlayStation, as you can see, music, you can even pull up vehicle cameras front and rear if you want to like monitor the road while you're sitting in the back seat for some reason. And when you have your audio system or your TV selected, you can control it with this screen to the side. You can adjust your volume, your track, whatever you're listening to on that screen there. There's also a remote control. Open up the center console between the two back seats. Here's your remote for the television to switch what input you're looking at. And as you can see in the center console, you also have your PS S5 controller so you can use it to play games on your TV. Now, between the center console and the center screen, you have this little pad. That's a wireless charging pad for devices. Stick them there and they charge. It doesn't look wireless charging paddy. It looks more luxurious, but that's what it does. A nice touch. Now, earlier I mentioned that the front seats are power operated and they can go forward, backward, etc. But these rear seats are really the places you want to be sitting in this van. They have a lot more space and they have pillows on the headrest so you can just lie back and enjoy your luxury ride. And they are far more adjustable. Using the adjustment here on the side, you can basically recline the seats the entire way so you can lie down. Once they're fully reclined with the footrest out, you can send another footrest out even further. So you can really lie down and have a first class experience in the back of this van. The back seats are also here 
heated and cooled, as you can see. Push these buttons on the side to turn that on for an even enhanced luxury experience. And you have other nice conveniences sitting in these seats back here. Cup holders, of course, and in fact, they are perfectly designed to fit the included cups, glasses that you get with this van. You also have a ashtray for your cigarette or cigar ashes back here. And you have little storage compartments, as you can see, for books, magazines, phones, whatever you might want, just like you might find in a first-class airplane cabin. But to me, one of the very coolest parts of the interior of this van, in addition to all the crazy features it has, is the fact that it's all pretty factory looking, like I said. Design VIP, a company built it, really took the time to use Mercedes-Benz switchgear and parts, like the seat controls actually from a Mercedes-Benz, instead of some ugly generic seat control like you often see in these vans. The climate vents on the ceiling are actually Mercedes-Benz climate vents. The upholstery used is actually Mercedes-Benz upholstery. Even the head pillows for the back Back seats, the seat belt buckles, it's all real Mercedes-Benz stuff, which helps to enhance the feeling that you're in a factory Mercedes-Benz vehicle. A lot of companies will create these vans with kind of cheesy, kind of discount parts that are generic, they don't look so good, and then they just upcharge them like crazy. In this, it really looks like you're sitting inside a van that was done up by Mercedes-Benz. And that extends all the way up to the ceiling where you have this little mirror. You tap on it, pull it down, and there's a mirror that falls. You can look at yourself just like they have in the back of a nice S-Class sedan. One thing that isn't very Mercedes-Benz, however, is the floor, which is an interesting mix of carbon fiber and then fuzzy carpeting, as you can see. It's an interesting combination, the old carbon fiber and fuzzy carpeting combo. You don't usually get that one, but it's nice. And of course, take off your shoes and enjoy the fuzzy carpeting between the seats, which adds to the luxurious appeal. And next up, we move on to the back of the Maybach-inspired Metris. You pop open the power tailgate, which is massive in a Metris, and you see uh, the rear, the cargo area back here, which has a few interesting quirks and features of its own. For one, you have a little switch back here, silver switch, up and down. What does it do? You press it, and a storage compartment opens up automatically from below the seats, like sort of a hidden storage compartment where you can put stuff, kind of cool, and you have that on both sides, driver and passenger. You also have, well, this leather box, which comes with each one of these vans, sort of a gift box from Design VIP, the manufacturer, and then there's a bag here that includes like safety equipment, a first aid kit, stuff you might need if you have an emergency while you're on the road. But to me, the most interesting thing back here is this leather strap. As you can see, stitching with aluminum trim on the sides. What exactly is that? Well, you take it out of its little home here and you hang it by these hooks on the ceiling of the van in back and that's for clothing. If you have an item of clothing, a suit or a dress that you can't drop somewhere and have it get wrinkled, now you have a huge clothesline in the back where you can hang your item and it will stay hung throughout your drive. And next up, we move up to the front of this Maybach-inspired luxury van where we discover it's not particularly luxurious up here. Ultimately, this van is based on the Metris. And while you can do a lot of stuff in the back to make it better, nicer, more luxurious, cooler, more features, you can't really do all that much to change the Metris up here. Now, to their credit, they tried. There are some nice upgrades. The steering wheel has this nice carbon fiber finish and perforated leather looks good. You also have leather trim two-tone on the dashboard, as you can see. The seats have been changed to a softer Mercedes-Benz Maybach leather, which looks nice. But at the end of the day, you still have a lot of controls that have to be kept from the standard Metris. So there's a lot of plastic up here, a lot of stuff that just sort of looks Looks, well, only average. Then again, this isn't the place that you're going to be spending time. If you want one of these vans, you're hanging out in the back playing PlayStation while the driver drives along and, well, is paid to be up here. But that's kind of the drawback of this van. The interior in the front is not particularly nice. And worth pointing out, it's also kind of tight up here. Because of the partition, which comes pretty far forward, these front seats are mounted relatively far up and pretty 
pretty straight at a straight angle, and so driving comfort isn't exactly the best. But again, that's not really the purpose of this van. And it's the same story up front in this van, where you have a very Metris powertrain. The same two-liter turbo four-cylinder that's in the standard Metris is in this van with no apparent upgrades. That's not a particularly inspired engine. It's only about 210 horsepower, but again, you don't care if you get one of these. You're in the back, you're watching TV, and what's under the hood doesn't matter. Now, more importantly, on the outside of this van, the way it looks is actually pretty cool. You had this neat waterfall grill that is very Maybach. It says Maybach on the top, and it looks luxurious and high-end. You also have a Maybach hood ornament in the front, as you can see, and in the back, the Maybach badge on the tailgate, along with a couple of subtle Maybach logos on the side. That's about it in terms of exterior upgrades, and that, frankly, is the correct thing to do. You could go nuts putting Maybach logos everywhere, but then it wouldn't look right, because Maybach wouldn't do that. There wouldn't be giant decals on the side, banners on the windshield. Instead, they've kept it subtle, kept it luxurious, and it almost does look like a Maybach van, which would be pretty cool. All right, driving this crazy Mercedes van inspired by Maybach. This part of the review is not going to be all that interesting. You've seen all the cool stuff. It's in the back. That's where everything cool is with this van. The driving experience is the least cool, least interesting component, particularly because, as I've mentioned, this van is based on the Mercedes-Benz Metris, which is not a vehicle that I think is all that great, at least in stock form. I gotta be honest, this Metris is really cool because of all the stuff they've done. Sometimes these conversions come off a little half-baked and, you know, they look cheap and chintzy. That is not the case here. This is the nicest, like, converted luxury van that I've ever been in. It's really, really a high quality thing. So one drawback about this van, because of the partition in between the front and the rear, the seats are actually pretty far forward. So tall drivers don't have an enormous amount of space up here. And so it's a little bit tight for me actually, despite being this massive van. But again, all the fun is in the back. Like if you're using this van, if you're, if you're interested in this van, if you think this van is cool, it's because of what's going on back there. Your chauffeur, he can be a little uncomfortable. There's nicer touches than what you'd get in a standard Metris, but it's definitely still a Metris from the driver's seat. And so that means sort of an uninspired driving experience, definitely kind of sloppy steering. You, you have basically no steering feel for the first inch of travel, and then it starts to do stuff. And it's not particularly quick, and it's not particularly confidence-inducing either. It just sort of does what it does. You do have a good commanding driving position in a Metris. You sit up high, you look out over the road. And the other cool thing about the Metris, it's not that big. It's big. I mean, this is a big van by a lot of people's standards but compared to a cargo van or a sprinter van, the Metris is actually a pretty reasonable one, which is why the Metris is a decent platform to start this build, because a sprinter is cool and you, it, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff in the back, but it becomes a bit of a problem when you actually try to go places with it, particularly a high roof model or a long model. It's just a little bit more unwieldy. The Metris, though I don't love driving it, is a much more like maneuverable van in tight spaces. Truthfully, this drives like a Metris, which is not a particularly great thing. It has this four cylinder engine, which has a decent amount of power. I mean, it does what it needs to do. It's hard to neutralize the driving dynamics of a van if you have a van, and this drives like a van. Again, not particularly interesting, nothing especially groundbreaking in terms of the way it drives. It just drives like you'd expect. And overall, I think that's kind of the basic here. The van drives like van. <laughs> nothing, nothing unusual or exciting in this part of the video. And so that's the Maybach-inspired Mercedes-Benz van. Although some minivans now cost over $50,000, nobody has ever really tried a true luxury van. There's never been a Lexus or a BMW minivan, but this gives you an idea of what it would look like if Maybach did their take on a minivan. And now it's time to give this van a Doug score. 
And the Doug score is here, 54 out of 100. The Maybach inspired Metris beats out all the other prior vans I've reviewed, but it deserves to. It's really cool and I loved it. I've been around so many poorly done sprinter vans that seem cool, but have cheesy rope lights, bad upgrades, and they're overpriced. This Metris seems like it's mostly done right. And I really enjoyed checking it out and getting one person's take on what a Maybach van would be like if such a thing existed.